Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update, the only show dedicated to Howard Community College athletics. This month, Howard and Montgomery College renew their rivalry. Coach Dragonoff is our featured guest on Dragon Sports Radio, and you'll meet Alex Collier in an all-new Dragon close-up. We'll start with women's volleyball. Howard squares off against Region 20 rival Montgomery College. Mark Zeno anchors our volleyball coverage. Thanks, Diane. I'm here with Howard's assistant coach, Danielle Katsampis. Last season was historic for the Dragons. Howard won the conference, district, and finished sixth overall at Nationals. All-American Stephanie Kelly leads a sophomore class that is expected once again to compete for the national championship. Danielle, what makes Stephanie such a unique talent? In the volleyball world, Stephanie is what we call a very seasoned player. She has a Division I mindset and Division I hands. She knows how to make a play happen around the defense of the team she's playing. Howard and Montgomery College are both NJCAA Division III programs that compete in District G. Montgomery College won the District three years ago. They're 2-1 and one entering this match. Danielle, what makes the Raptors such a tough challenge? Their head coach, Amir, is a very good coach. He knows how to design defenses around the teams he's playing. Uh, Montgomery College is the kind of team that doesn't make many mistakes either. Um, it's going to be tough because they have hitters that can place the ball really well around our defense. Howard and Montgomery College face off next. Let's go to the Dragons Lair. First set, Howard has a one point lead. The Dragons get into their system. Victoria Johnson delivers the big right hand kill. Oh, big time assist from Stephanie Kelly. She sets a 31, which in the volleyball world is a tempo one. It's all about timing when you're doing these kinds of plays. Stephanie Kelly breaks up the attack. Katrina Katulski finds a setter. Kelly puts it away. Stephanie saw the entire defense was crashing up to cover the hitter, so she sent it flying deep, which is something only a seasoned player will see mid-rally. Howard wins the first set, on to the second. Victoria Johnson goes up and beats him with a tip. Dragons win the second set, 25-13. Montgomery College needs to win this set to stay alive. Yesenia Mora goes up. She's turned away by Johnson. Oh, man, that one's going to leave a big mark. 14 to 12, Howard. Montgomery College controls the serve. Andrea Falcon outside to Mora, point for MC. Falcon runs it up the middle to Mora. Another precision kill for the sophomore out of Northwest High School. Falcon likes the matchup in the middle. Maya Gillette puts it down. Looks like our girls are back on their heels. The Raptors have stepped up their game big time. They're pretty determined not to let us win this game. Montgomery College wins the third set. 16-15 MC, the Raptors get into their system. Falcon to Mora. Solo stop from Victoria Johnson. There's that big momentum shift our team needed. Kelly sets up Dorothy Hansen. She puts it away. Sophomore Victoria Johnson pulled off the block, saw the tip coming, was able to cover that ball. You know you're a pretty big threat when you have two blockers going up against you. Victoria Johnson sees those two blockers and finds an open spot on the court to put the ball. Howard needs two points to win the match. They find the setter. Kelly outside to Katulski, and she pounds it home. Now that's a nice cross-court shot. Match point for the Dragons. Montgomery College can't control the serve, and Howard gets the win. With Stephanie Kelly at the helm, we were able to step up against a well-seasoned and experienced team. Let's go to Mylon Ward for some post-game reactions. You guys were doing pretty good, and the other team got momentum. How were you guys able to get momentum back and finish the game strong? I mean, I remember that coach called a timeout, and uh, just told everybody to take a deep breath, and for me, that's the thing that uh, helped me the most, of just everything stopping at one point and getting, yeah, getting back into it. Well, Mickey, what was the one of the deciding factors or major roles that the team played in being able to finish and win, win this game? The coach told us that no one's our theme for this game is that no one's going to out hustle us, and I think that once we put that in our mind and once we play our game and we played Dragon Volleyball, we got into it and we out hustled them and we played our game very well. Dorothy, what were some of the things you worked on in the off season that you feel played a major role in the games you played this weekend? Mm, I feel like when practice started, um, we've been take, I've been taking practice a little bit more seriously. I've been trying to get my hits right and yeah, that's basically it. Congratulations on a big win, ladies. For Dragon's Layer Update, I'm Mylon Ward. Now it's time for some men's soccer. Howard takes on Hagerstown in a Maryland JUCO contest. The Dragons open their conference schedule against the past two champions. Howard lost both games in the final minutes, putting their conference title hopes in jeopardy. Howard's assistant coach Nick DePinto joins me now. Coach, what's been the emphasis in practice leading up to this match? A lot of the emphasis has been on uh, covering um, the uh, 
the, the total area, covering areas of responsibilities uh, and being aggressive, being able to, uh, to step up to the play, anticipate uh, uh, the play. Uh, that's really been the uh, the major emphasis over the last uh, several practices as we look uh, ahead into uh, uh, playoffs. And what will be the deciding factor against Hagerstown? I think the deciding factors in this game are going to be our ability to be able to neutralise uh, uh, the opponents. Uh, we're expecting a physical game, as is the case, uh, as been the case over the uh, last several years against uh, teams from uh, Western Maryland, especially teams like uh, Hagerstown. So uh, certainly deciding factors, ability to identify uh, their, their strong players, neutralise them, create chances, and being able to finish the chances that we create. Hagerstown is an NJCAA Division I program that competes in the North Central District and the Maryland JUCO Conference. Hagerstown enters the match with a 4-2 and two record. Coach, what challenges did the Hawks present? Uh, Hagerstown, as I indicated before, historically have been a, a very uh, aggressive, very they play a very physical uh, uh, type of uh, game. Uh, we're expecting nothing less from them uh, uh, today. Uh, they have uh, several players spread across the the, uh, the entire field uh, that can create problems from a physical level, uh, especially if our players decide to, to step back and not take the game to them. And then they have one or two uh, players in the uh, in the uh, uh, upper front, the upper third area that uh, uh, according to the stats uh, can be dangerous so uh, our ability to neutralize those players uh, are going to be key as well today. Thanks for the inside coach. Howard and Hagerstown kick off next. First half, plenty of pace early on for Howard. Andy Ravello threads it through to Max Grauman. Grauman outside to Jabril Sheriff. Room for Sheriff to turn. The cross comes in. Grauman surgical with the header. Here's another look. Beautiful delivery from Sheriff, and Groman arrives at the far post. 17th minute, the Dragons lead Hagerstown 1 0. Andy Ravello sends it deep to Sheriff. Hagerstown has trouble clearing it. Groman regains possession for Howard. Tremendous touch for Michelle Alduag. Jabril Sheriff has an eternity, lines it up, and flame throws it past the keeper. Superb strike from the freshman out of Reservoir High School. You see Alduag drawing two defenders and sending a perfect ball to Sheriff. The first year forward has enough craft to squeeze it right through. Howard's taking it to Hagerstown. Three minutes later, Alduag goes to John Joseph. Costly mistake from the Hagerstown defender, and Joseph makes him pay. Howard scores three goals in 20 minutes. The aggressive game plan is paying off. Howard continues to bring the pressure. There are seven Dragons in the attacking third. Alduag with the bicycle kick. Sebastian Patino finds the back of the net. The Colombian international student scores his first goal of the year. Second half, the Hawks are looking for a big half of their own. Jacob Hargett, good ball into the middle. Here's a chance for Hagerstown. Yusuf Bodorov lifts it above the keeper. Hagerstown would get no closer. Ian Evans puts the finishing touches on a huge conference win for Howard. Matt Stolbos with Ian Evans and Max Grauman. Max, you had a phenomenal goal in the first half. Tell us, how did that play develop? Uh, we saw that we needed to move the ball outside, and I got the ball, saw Jabril outside, he passed to him, he pulled it over, and I knew how to put it in the back of the net for the goal. Max, what was the key to building that 4 nothing lead against a very, they're, they're a good D1 team with a winning record, how'd you build that lead? Uh, we knew that we had to come out strong. The uh, rest of the games, we haven't been coming out good in the first five minutes. We came out strong in the first half, and we knew we had to put at least some way to shut the team down in the first half, to put them out of the game, and just to put it away and win the game. Ian, talk about the chemistry that you're building with your teammates. Our chemistry has been really well recently. At the start, we were, weren't really as much as a team, but soon, like recently, um, we've been playing really well, practicing together. A lot of teams been working hard together and stuff like that. Great team win, gentlemen. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. You're listening to Dragon Sports Radio on HCC Radio, The Dragon. I'm Louis Garcia, and right now I'm joined in the studio by HCC men's soccer coach Stefan Dragunov. Coach, welcome. Thank you, Louis. So uh, we we're talking right after the game against Hagerstown, and how do you feel your team played? It was a 5-2 win, so it looked, sounded like they played a good game. Um, yeah, we, the game was pretty good for, for our team. Uh, I think uh, we started the game on the right foot, 4 uh, nothing in the first 
30 minutes and uh, then in the half time we will you know talk and discuss with the coaching staff just to save some players for the next game uh, we use some players that uh, they that usually taking a, a lot of playing time uh, of the games uh, so they have just opportunity to test where the level is in this uh, college level and then uh, kind of uh, disbalance a little bit uh, the rhythm and uh, the second half was not that very uh, strong as the first 30 minutes. Uh, well, Coach DePinto had said before the game that your team needed to step up and anticipate the play. Do you think they, they were able to do that? If we we have to talk about the first 30 minutes, what we asked the players and told them to do uh, as a strategy and how they have to start and play and closing down and put uh, uh, the opposition team on, on pressure, they did it perfectly. That's why we were, um, you know, for nothing in the first 30 minutes. Your team's gotten off to a 3-3 three and three start. Um, the 5-2 win over Hagerstown. Um, you seem to be scoring a lot of goals. What what has impressed you about this year's team so far? Um, a scoring, a high scoring team, uh, good defensive players. Um, we knew uh, before the season started that we we may gonna have some problems uh, um, on the back because uh, typically we couldn't find the right uh, uh, players uh, on the back. Uh, so we were work during this you know preseason to find the right person uh, on the back and um, we just uh, make adjustment of uh, switching position on one of our midfields that we, we with him I think we could be even more um, dangerous and strong in offense um, but just because of uh, this problem on the back uh, we would just aim and put him as a center back um, but still uh, we struggle and um, as you know based on the results if you score three goals against Rockville uh, you have to you know win this game if you score three goals against Hartford you gotta sco- uh, win this game you know, most of the coaches uh, they have this uh, kind of philosophy that the defense wins games. But uh, at, at this point, we we're still working on uh, getting better and better in defense. So you feel you're still experimenting on defense? Um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, even we're kind of in the middle in the season, we're still not uh, um, that confident that the, our defensive line it's uh, you know strong enough to challenge uh, the season and the playoffs. Coach Stefan Dragunov, thanks for coming on uh, Dragon Sports Radio. Thank you. Nice to have me. Women's soccer analyst Kenefa Mullings joins me now for a game that's always special. Howard takes on arch rival Montgomery College. After losses to Division I national championship contenders, Howard emerged with a battle-tested 0-2 record. In their first conference match, the Dragons showed no fear against the defending Region 20 champions, earning a big win on the road. Kenefa, you played for Coach Seagroves. What style of soccer do you expect to see from the Dragons? I expect to see fast-paced movement and possession. Uh, Coach Seagroves always talks about movement and playing off the ball and playing defeat, which means getting the passes directly to your teammates' feet. Uh, As we get deeper into the season, the passing and movement gets better, and this allows us to beat opponents and break down defense and get the balls to goal. Howard and Montgomery College are both NJCAA Division III programs that compete in Region 20. Just like Howard, the Raptors opened with a tough non-conference schedule. Montgomery College opened the season with a loss to the number one D3 program in the nation. Kenefa, you played against MC twice last year. Describe their game. I think we're evenly matched. It's like playing against ourselves. Um, Montgomery College likes to take shots outside of the 18 and have their players crash the goals as well as play the sidelines. Expect to see MC run it down the sidelines and play the field wide. Howard takes on Montgomery College next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, Lisa Don gets the possession for Howard. Don dribbles ahead. She sends a ball through to Alex Collier. It catches the Raptors out of position. Collier is in a one-on-one with the defender. She will not be denied. Collier punches it in. Here you see Lisa Don looks up sees the choices she has, then plays a beautiful penetrating pass to Alex Collier. Collier keeps it at her feet despite the defender and places the ball perfectly. Collier continues to pressure the MC back line and it pays off here. Here's a chance for the Dragons. Alex Collier swings it in. Montgomery College can't clear, but Ashley Ladder hauls in the loose ball. Howard is dominating possession in the first half. 47th minute, 
Desiree Bazzioni wins the ball for Howard. Bazzioni challenged by Tamara Castillo. Bazzioni holds on, sees daylight, and it's a foot race. Desiree Bazzioni breaks into the penalty area and drives it into the corner. Look how she easily switches the ball from one side to the other, then sends a perfectly placed shot into the lower 90. 54th minute, Montgomery College is committing numbers forward, looking to increase their chances of scoring. Jewel Johnson, good ball to Rachel Anderson. Amy Byer makes the save. Free kick for the Raptors. And a cordon takes it. She cuts the lead down to one. We're getting tired and weak in the back. This is opening up more opportunities for Montgomery College to hit shots on frame. Rachel Anderson has room to shoot. And a big time save from Amy Byer. That's something I've been working on with her during warmups. Amy got her hands up as high as possible to block the space between her hand and the crossbar. 87th minute now, Montgomery College looking for the equalizer. Johnson sends it ahead for Cordon. Christy Fisk clears it. Terrific win for Howard. Our girls are beginning to understand how each other plays and are starting to mesh well. Two to one is your final. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Alex, you were able to give Howard the lead early in the game. Tell us about your goal. Well, Lisa here, she played me a really good ball on a diagonal, which is what we look for during practice when we're practicing. And I just dribbled it up and their defender kind of stumbled on it a little bit, but I kept pursuing it and just played through the ball and then played a good shot in the back post. Lisa, you played the ball to Alex. Talk about your perspective of that first goal. Um, really, I received the ball and just when I looked up, I could see their defense was kind of spread out. And I heard Alex call for it, so I just slotted it through, and she managed to win the ball and get in the back of the net. All right, so second half, Des, you scored a goal. Tell us about what led up to that goal. Well, I was getting a lot of inf uh, feedback from my team and Kate saying, you need to be selfish. So I figured right in the second half I would be selfish, and I ended up doing that, and I ended up getting a goal out of that. You have already have wins so far against Anne Arundel and MC. Those were two of the teams that beat you last year. How does it feel? What does it do for your team's confidence getting these wins early? Oh, that boosts our team's confidence a lot. I know last year those were two of the toughest games, and to win both those games in the beginning of our season this year really gets us pumped. So I think we're going to have a great season. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. The head coach of women's soccer is here. She is a five-time Region 20 champion. Kate Seagroves. Coach, it's a pleasure to have you on this program. Thanks for having me. Coach, let's get right to it. Assess your team against Montgomery College. Uh, the first half was great. I thought we came out, we completely dominated. Uh, they couldn't even get across our field. Uh, we put a goal away pretty early. Um, I think we had them against the ropes. Um, unfortunately, we, you know, we had some shots. We just couldn't seem to find the back of the net enough. Um, you know, second half, I basically told them, you got to come out and be a little bit more selfish. Let's, you know, once you have a team on the ropes like that, you got to find a way to put them away. Um, we, we actually put another goal in, but then we had a little lapse in, in our play. We started to fall off a little bit. They were able to put one in, and they started to get to some momentum. So I was getting a little nervous because we would let them right back in the game. And in the sport of soccer, a two-goal lead is, is one of the hardest to keep because all it takes is for them to score one goal, the momentum shifts, and it's, it, it almost seems like they can find a way to actually put two more in once you're down. But uh, fortunately, we were able to hold on came away with a 2-1 win. Now what matches have revealed the character of this team this year? Um, two come to mind. Um, our Lewisburg game, actually both games in North Carolina, Cape Fear and Lewisburg, both Division I teams. Lewisburg represented Region t 10 in the national tournament last year. Very, very strong programs down there. So going down there and playing that type of competition very early in the season uh, it could be a little scary, but we represented well. I mean, we didn't win the games, but the team never gave up. Um, we battled until the very last minute. And, uh, you know, so those two teams told me, or those two games told me that, uh, you know, we were going to be a team to reckon with this year. Now let's talk about your schedule. What matches will you have that will help prepare you for the Region 20 tournament? Well, fortunately for us, I feel like we had our, some of our tougher competition early. You know, Anne Arundel is always going to be a battle for us, and obviously Montgomery College is going to be a battle for us. And we've played them already, and we've beaten them. I'm hoping for a number one seed for the tournament so that the other teams can kind of beat each other up before if we have to do anything. I guess going into October, maybe even November, uh, looking ahead, how, peaking is such a 
I don't know, it's ambiguous. But right. how do you get your kids to peak at the right time? That comes from a multitude of things. I mean, for one, our fitness level gets a little bit better. Um, some of the nagging little injuries that we have currently hopefully will get better. Um, hopefully we don't sustain any more injuries. Um, we're, we're a small group this year. Um, so, you know, those are the key things. If we can get through the, you know, the season without injuries and we can get a little fitter and, you know, we've already got the components of the girls can play. I mean, they, they, uh, we have soccer players this year, which is nice. Um, the biggest thing is we don't have a lot of them. Um, a couple more bodies out on the field would have been nice for us, but, you know, we're making do with what we have. The biggest thing right now is we need to still stay healthy. What do you want people to know about women's soccer at Howard Community College? Uh, it's a great time. I, I, I think if you asked any of our, our current players or even former players, they would tell you it's one of the best things they could have ever decided to do. Um, you know, yeah, we're competitive, and yes, we work hard. And, you know, there are times where I can be a little rough on them. But I think in the end, they realize that, you know, we become family. Um, you know, this will be a part of them for the rest of their lives. And it's a decision that they're going to be extremely happy they made because uh, we, we make it fun. I almost want to suit up for you, Coach. <laughs> what, is there an age limit on this? Uh, that's up to the NJCA. <laughs> I think I might be over the hill. I think I might be, too. <laughs> coach, good luck the rest of your season. Thank you. Up next, we'll talk cross country with head coach Steve Musselman. Dragon's Lair Update will be back after a short break. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Welcome back. My next guest started the cross country and track programs here at Howard Community College. Head coach Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome coach. Thank you, Diane. Tell us about your teams this year. This year we have more women than men, which is, which is a good thing. It, it's, it's fun. They're very organized. They're they're taking control of the overall program. Sometimes, we, you know, I told the men's team, we put things to a vote, you guys are going to be in trouble. <laughs> so I said, make certain you're nice to the women. But right now we have uh, nine women and seven men. How does coaching men differ than coaching women? Or what do you do differently? Or do you do anything differently? I know since I'm coaching two different distances, it's, you know, the workload's a little different. But I, I try to challenge them both equally. What, what I like about both groups are very supportive of, of each other. My novice guy came in today to talk to me, and uh, for an 8K last weekend, he was hoping to break 40 minutes, and he almost broke 35. And But he still has some confidence issues. So Rachel came in, a returner from last year, and I said, Rachel, what do you think how Eric did last week? He goes, I think, she goes, I think you did awesome. And uh, you just saw his face light, light, lighten up because... One, you know, a teammate was complimenting him, and two, a female was complimenting him, and that helped his ego a little bit, too. So he knew that he's going to work harder and try to get better. What would you want to say to people about men's and women's cross country at Howard Community College? I'm a big believer in opportunities. When I was at Frostburg, when I transferred into there from my school in Kentucky, you know, Coach Lewis was, was a mentor to me and goes, you're not my best runner, but you're grinding out every day. You're working hard. And I want to present, you know, people in the county, state, whatever, that same opportunity. You'll get a chance to compete. You'll get a chance to sort of exposure to these major four-year schools, and you'll get a chance to run for a national title. I think that's what was important. When uh, we won track, Coach Lewis called me, and he said, Stephen, savor this. He goes, you know, how many people can say they've actually accomplished this? He said, you need to savor what you did. Absolutely. And I think um, rumor has it for me that anybody that runs for you has always become a better runner, a better student, and a better person. Good luck the rest of the season, Coach. Thank you, Diane. Sometimes you have to step back before you can move forward. That's what happened to the top scorer on the HCC women's soccer team. Alex Collier had to step away from the game for a couple of years. But now she's returned and her future looks brighter than ever. 
Marla Katz introduces us to Alex in this month's Dragon Close-Up. In 2010, the HCC women's soccer team not only made it to nationals, it finished tied for third. And one of their top players, Alex Collier, made the all-tournament team. It was a standout season for the Dragons as well as Alex. Like after high school, I was really sad that soccer was kind of over. And then when I decided to play soccer for HCC, I wasn't sure what to expect. And the fact that I never even imagined that we would go to nationals. But for Alex, that feeling didn't last long. Well, I didn't do so great academically my first semester. Um, I just kind of was young and I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know what I wanted my major to be. She eventually dropped out and hit a rough patch in her life. I was young and stupid and I got into a bad way of life with some bad friends and bad people and that definitely threw me off track. But after spending some time on the sidelines, Alex decided it was time to put her life back on the right track. In spring 2013 I finally just threw myself back into school and um, I always had soccer in the back of my mind and I really, really wanted to come back and play, but getting 24 credits from spring until fall 2013 in that short amount of time was a big commitment. And I ended up taking enough credits in the summer to be able to be eligible for the fall 2013. So she took a full load over at CCBC and while she was there, she ran into the soccer coach and he started talking to her about playing there. I was contemplating telling Kate that I had committed to play at CCBC and I was actually standing in line to sign up for classes there and I texted her and I said, I'm sorry that I decided to play at CCBC. And she said it was a disappointment and that she would have, would have loved to have me come back and within 10 seconds I decided to come back. <laughs> and I said, Alex, I would take you with open arms. I said, I know what you can do and you're you're such a phenomenal player that, you know, I would take you in a heartbeat. After she joined, I realized that she was the same person that, like, we'd heard about because some of the people last year had played with her. But coming in, I didn't know who she was at all. She fits in really well. You know, everyone gets along really well. And it's, it's nice to have people on the team who have played at this level before. It helps that Alex has become a force on offense. And she's a true forward, you know, to come across someone who just has that nose for the goal, they're very hard to come by. She's very good with her feet and uh, has the ability to shoot from almost anywhere. I played some co-ed soccer in some like rec leagues and stuff um, and that definitely improved my ability with like foot skill because playing co-ed, playing against big tall men, um, I always couldn't use my, you know, men are faster than me so I try to incorporate my other players into the field as much as I can. Alex likes the way she's playing, but in this go around at HTC, she's probably even happier about her work in the classroom. Academically, I've done well, and I'm, you know, beyond, like, proud of myself for doing that. Alex wants to take her talents to a four-year school, where hopefully she can continue to play the game she loves. I'm Marla Katz for Dragon's Lair Update. See highlights of the biggest games before they air on the show. Go to youtube.com slash hccdragonsports. An all-new Dragon's Lair update premieres Friday, November 1st on HCC TV. Thanks for watching. And remember, Go Dragons!